May the people of God say amen. Amen. As always, we give honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've certainly been honored this afternoon during this most holy occasion to share the pulpit with none other than the Reverend Dr. William T. Newkirk. We are thankful for his presence and the presence and support of his church, Oak City Baptist Church, and the Reverend Dr. Terry Henry of Macedonia Baptist Church of Wilmington. We certainly thank God for the support of his church family as well. We are certainly thankful, and on behalf of Peter's Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church, we are humbled by the support of the entire community and everyone who is here at this moment. During our time of bereavement in which we support one another and lift up one another in prayer, amen. amen. But certainly during this time, I extend, as we all do, my sincerest condolences to the Murphy family, a family which in many ways has helped raise me ever since I was a freshman in high school. And certainly we are glad for the presence of friends and members of this great community, the Iron Mind community. Yes. Amen. I confess as my heart is heavy this afternoon that despite the heaviness of my heart that I have been given an easy task. The task I have been given is an easy one. Not in the sense of trying to craft from mere words a full and apt description of a beautiful life well lived. Not in the sense of grasping to find the right words out of the 171,476 words in the English language, trying to find the right words. No, not in that sense. I have not been granted an easy task in the sense of trying to find the proper words to eulogize a loving father, a loving brother, a devoted member of this faith, a loving and supportive cousin, a friend to all of us. No, I have been granted an easy task in the sense of being able to say but a few words that will not be the final words, by no means, but to say a few words about someone who loved the Lord. And Brother Murphy did love the Lord. And just as he loved the Lord, he loved all of us. Just as he loved the Lord, he loved his family. Just as he loved the Lord, he loved his friends. Just as he loved the Lord, he loved his co-workers and those for whom he worked to help rehabilitate and rehabilitate their ability to have a vocation. Brother Murphy, in his prayers and in his encouragement and in his upliftment, helped make all of us the best that we can be. In many ways, he helped me be the best I can be. I would not know it until later, but when I was on the south side of Chicago three years ago, I would later discover that Brother Murphy would tune in every Sunday, that he was sending prayers and support. I won't say much about it, but I will say that you can't make it on the south side of Chicago without prayers, amen? amen. <laughs> and in life, it's a beautiful thing when you can always count on someone's smile, when you, when you can count on someone's laughter, when you can count on their encouragement, and we can rely upon Brother Murphy's smile. We can rely upon his gentle spirit and his good heartedness and his warmth. And seeking to try to be the best homiletician I can be, and by homiletician I mean preacher, sometimes um, I'm accused of possessing a large vocabulary. I stand guilty of that, y'all. Someone once said, you better have your dictionary whenever you hear him preach. <laughs> My response is, good news is, most smartphones have a dictionary app, so look up the words. <laughs> because of one thing we can be assured, our ancestors went through too much for us to be mediocre, amen? amen. As Brother Cornell West said, let the, small, let, let the phone be smart. We must be wise. Amen. And the Bible is a book of wisdom. Yes, it is. In fact, there are five books of wisdom in the Bible. There are Psalms and Proverbs and Job and Lamentations, but then there is this one book called Ecclesiastes. Yes. Yeah. We call it that, but 
Some ancient scholars might refer to it as Kohelet, a Hebrew word for the name of a Hebrew poet and prophet and scribe. And what Kohelet wrestled with in the book that we call Ecclesiastes are three things. He wrestled with the inevitable, right. the things you can't avoid. Wow. He wrestled with ubiquity, something that surrounds you all the time. Mm -hmm. He also wrestled with eternality, things that do not end. Mm -hmm. Death is inevitable. We cannot avoid it. All right. Death is ubiquitous. It surrounds us. But death is not eternal. Death is temporary. As we all know, and it has been said by speakers greater than myself, death is but a layover. It is not our destination. For the faithful, death is the means through which we get from this side to the other side, but it is not permanent. And Kohelet writing this book that we call Ecclesiastes from the voice of King Solomon, as he wrestles with it, he speaks the words about time that we've heard just a few moments ago. <clears throat> that for everything there is a season, a time, and a matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what has been planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones away and a time to gather stones together. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love. A time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. But there is also another time of which we should be aware. It is this moment and this time, and this is the time in which we honor the life of our dear brother Anthony. This is the time in which we honor the love that he has shown to all of us and the love that we carry with us. For we can follow his example of how to be a good friend, of how to be a good co-worker, of how to be a good neighbor, of how to be a faithful member of this faith that we call the Christian faith. Brother Murphy spent his life serving others and also serving the great state of North Carolina, a state in which our motto in the Latin is esse quam vigere, which means to be rather than to sing. Brother Murphy just didn't sing like a Christian. He was a Christian. Amen. He just didn't sing like a good father. He was a good father. Just didn't sing like a good brother, but was a good brother. Just didn't sing like a good friend, but was a good friend. And we can all attest to that. He just didn't seem like an inspiration. No, he inspired all of us. And very unironically, the author of Ecclesiastes says a few more things about work and says, what gain have the workers from their toil? I've seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with, and he's made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he put a sense of the past and the future into their minds, yet they cannot find out. What God has done from the beginning to the end. But I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy. And to be happy as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. Brother Murphy took delight in his life and in his work and in loving all of us. I visited Brother Anthony at Duke Medical Center. It's now been over a decade ago. I, I received a call at home one night and I was told it was an urgent matter. I'll be honest, I was on my way to Durham and I'm, I'm glad I got another call to tell me to go to Raleigh. I didn't even know there was a Duke Medical in Raleigh. I, because I'll be honest, I was born as a Tar Heel. I am a Tar Heel. I try to stay away from anything that has the word Duke in the name. <laughs> But as I arrived on Old Wake Forest Road in Raleigh, as I was speeding up the inner belt line, and as I arrived there, I saw Brother Anthony in great pain. I, I never knew whether or not he was aware that I was there that evening, but what I saw and what I witnessed was the full measure of his faith. Because I've often said anybody can be a Christian on a sunny day. Let's see what your faith looks like when it rains. Uh, and I saw Brother Anthony holding himself and he kept repeating one thing that I pray that all of us repeat whenever the storms of life 
meet us at our doorstep. All he said was, Lord Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus, help me. We now know that Brother Anthony no longer has to embrace himself and say, Lord Jesus, help me. But the Lord has now welcomed him up on high. And he sees him face to face where he now has the embrace of the Lord. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and leave you now because I'm seeking to be a brief Baptist as I get on close to the age of 50. That's a new habit I'm trying to pick up by not holding you too long. But I think about that moment in which Brother Anthony was in so much pain and amidst our hurt, let us now be comforted, for his pain is gone. Yes. He is not hurting right now. He is not suffering right now. His pain is gone. And when I think about the absence of pain, in fact, that's why pain exists. So that we can rejoice over its absence. That's why life gets hard sometimes. So we can rejoice whenever life gets better. And as I think about the absence of pain, I think back to the days in which I... For those who know me, you know I used to work at Coca-Cola driving trucks and vans. That's how I helped pay my way through seminary when I was first going to school. And, and I was working along with a partner, a good friend of mine, a brother I've known for four decades now. And, and it was Friday about 5.15 and our supervisor sent us out to do something and nobody, let's be honest, nobody works on Friday after lunchtime. <laughs> And so we were in a hurry to do what our supervisor wanted us to do, and our supervisor even told us to take his car. So we took his car, we had to drop off some products at a family reunion, and the family was so appreciative, they gave my partner and I three plates of trout, three plates of flounder, and then they gave us a potato salad, and coleslaw, and lobster, and crab. And my partner and I said, let us agree that they gave this to us, not the supervisor. He wasn't there. As we returned to the plant, excited to get to that lobster and crab and potato salad and coleslaw, we were in such a hurry that as we were locking up the car and going back to give the key to our supervisor, my partner said to me, you have the key, don't you? And then I, I patted my legs and said, no, you have the key, don't you? And you can see the key in the car just waving at me. But not only that, we can see the coleslaw, the potato salad, the crab, and the lobster in the back seat waving at us too. And so we had to decide who would let our supervisor know that we have locked his key in the car. My partner, and I give props to him for this, he said, I'll go ahead and tell him. And we told our supervisor, and you know when somebody's real mad when they try to convince you that they're not mad. Whenever we said, um, we're sorry, but we locked your key in the car. And he said, well, that's okay, I'll get the mechanic to open it up. He has the universal key. And we said, well, it's Friday, the mechanic's already gone. And our supervisor said, oh, that's okay. I mean, I'll be okay, I'm, I, I don't need my car. I mean, all you did was lock my key up in the car on a, on a weekend when I need it, but that's okay, though. I mean, mistakes happen, don't they? I mean, that's okay. I'm going to be all right. You know, I, I didn't need my car for anything special. I was just going to the beach. You know, I, I'll be okay. And I said to myself, as soon as he gets in that work van, he's going to add every expletive in the English language and then some to describe us. But not only that, it was the middle of July. And my partner said to me, you know, the key isn't even the worst part, but he has locked up in his car on three hot July days. Crab, lobster, coleslaw, potato salad, trout, and flounder. So we figured we would get to work early on Monday with some Clorox and Comet and Tylex and 409 and everything else. But he got there before us. And his car was already parked in front of the plant. We sat in his office for about five awkward minutes as he was on his computer. We didn't want to be the first to say anything. He didn't say anything. And then he finally stopped and looked at us and said, I tell you, that slaw is gone. <laughs> and I thought to myself, that slaw was sitting in there for three days. And something happened to it over the course of three days that it no longer was whatever it was on that first day as it was on the third. But then I got to thinking. I know somebody who also got sealed up for three days. And he was in one state when they put him in. But on the third day, whenever Pilate was looking for him, they had to tell Pilate, the Lord is gone. And because he's gone, that means our pain is gone. And ever since that tomb was empty, our suffering is gone. Our agony is gone. We can be assured now that Brother Anthony's on the other side and that he's in a place where sickness is no more, where death is no more, where hurt is no more, where his pain is gone. And because his pain is gone, that means joy is here. That means happiness is here. That means mercy 
is here. That means grace is here. That means celebration is here. And may all of God's people say amen. Amen. At this time, we now turn over our service to our funeral director.